This is Great Western Trail, Argentina. Let's learn how to play. Welcome back to the Meeple Marathon. Today we are talking about how to play Great Western Trail, specifically Argentina. Now, a lot of the rules and everything that we're going over here can easily be translated over to uh, basic or core Great Western Trail. And if you are familiar with Great Western Trail already and just want to learn the new rules that come as part of the Argentina edition, check out the video that's gonna be popping up in the upper right corner at this moment. But if this is your first time with Great Western Trail, you are in the right place. So the objective of Great Western Trail is to score the most points by the end of the game. You do that by taking your Estanciero, which is Spanish for rancher, and traveling along the trail. You can see here that they uh, is represented by dotted lines, dotted white lines, and does take branching paths. Now there's arrows at each of the locations to let you know where it splits off and, and how to follow along. It is a little light, um, but you know, up close, it's pretty easy to tell. So you're gonna always start down here in the lower left corner. You're going to travel the trail, which is gonna take you up here, wind back around, and eventually end up here in Buenos Aires. Um, unfortunately, they didn't make Buenos Aires um, very big and uh, obvious. It's just a big fancy building. Um, but that's where your goal is to end up when you get to Buenos Aires. You hopefully have um, managed your hand in a way that you have the best cattle cards you can come up with and you're going to take those cattle cards and put them you know deliver some cattle to one of these boats that's eventually probably going to take off and then deliver the cattle to one of these European ports over here on the far right. Every time you do so, you're going to you're going to gain some income, you're going to score some victory points and then you're going to start back over and do it all again. So Let's talk about first the cattle cards and the deck building aspect of this game. This is considered a deck builder. So you're going to start the game with a handful of cards that are just the same as everyone else, along with one exhaustion card. We'll get to those here in a little bit. But all of your starting cards are going to have this sun in the middle, and the interior of the sun is going to be your player color. So I am playing as the red person. The uh, AI Pedro here is playing as the blue player. But you're going to get your standard deck of cards here, your starter cards, you're going to shuffle them up, and you're going to start the game with a hand limit of four. That means you should always have four cards in your hand when you begin a turn. Now you can increase your hand limit by uh, upgrading your player board at these two locations here. How we pull those discs off, we'll talk about. We'll get to that. But just so you know, for right now, you should always have four cards in your hand. Now. You may take actions during your turn that will have you discarding a, a certain card from your hand, and um, that's perfectly fine. We're going to do that a lot, but at, at the end of your turn, you're always going to draw back up to your hand limit. And hopefully, you can see here, for example, I've got two whites, a green, and a black. Well, when I get to Buenos Aires, they only want unique cattle. So this one, I would have to go ahead and discard, but this would give me kind of a delivery strength of six, two, four, six. So I could essentially put my delivery on this boat or lower. So the six boat, the five boat, the three boat, one or zero. As the game goes along, you're gonna have the opportunity to purchase more cattle from this market here, all of which are better than your starting cards for the most part for various reasons. These will be added to your hand and as you play through discarding cards and drawing more cards, they'll cycle back into your hand and hopefully when you make it back to Buenos Aires, you'll have those in your hand and be able to deliver to even better boats. So, there are three phases to each of your turns um, during the game. There's the movement phase, the action phase, and then the you know cleanup phase, um, per se. So, first things first, movement phase. Very simple, you're gonna move your uh, rancher along the path a certain number of spaces depending on what your movement value is. On your player board we can see here that it is set to three 
right now, but again, we can upgrade this board to get it up to five and then even all the way up to six. Now, every time you see a building or a granjero, which is a farmer, you have to count one of those as one of your steps. So if I have a movement of three, I could go one, two, following this path here, make it all the way to there. That's pretty far. Okay, three. I could, however, stop right here. You don't have to use your full movement. All right, you could also go one, two, three, and help that Grand Harrow. Now, as you're moving along the Great Western Trail, anytime you see a black hand or a green hand, you're going to have to pay money to either the bank, if it's a Grand Harrow that's just on the board, or as we'll soon see, other players' buildings are going to end up along the trail. They're gonna build up their buildings along the trail, forcing you to pass through them or take the long way around them. And so if you pass through a building of theirs that has a green or black hand, you're gonna to have to pay those pesos to them. Um, the amount of pesos changes depending on the player count, so just know that you know black is a little better than green. Green is gonna cost you the most, most of the time. But as you um, move along, again, if you pass over a green and black hand, you pay the money. But if you don't have the money, if you physically don't have a peso to pay this Gran Hero, you, it doesn't stop your movement. So if I'm here and I have zero dollars, zero pesos in my hand, in my possession, I can still go one, two, three, and end up up here, okay? So the peso payment is required if you have uh, the coins to pay. Once you are at your location, then we move into uh, part B of your turn, and that's the action phase. I'm gonna start with uh, the Grand Harrows here because they're pretty simple. If you end your turn on a Grand Harrow, your action, your option for an action that turn is to help the Grand Harrow. You're gonna do that by trying to help them by gaining the amount of strength equal to what they require. So this gentleman right here needs a strength of six to help him uh, farm his fields. Now, how do we get strength? Well, as we uh, gain workers here, you'll see that some of them have strength built in. We also can upgrade our player board way over here to get a grand total of three strength built into our player board. And we also have our cattle. You could discard a, uh, some of your cattle cards here to gain the strength listed on uh, their cards. So that is how you help a Grand Harrow. If you have stopped on a Grand Harrow though, that's your only option. Also, if you happen to end your movement on someone else's building, so not yours, here's mine, and not a neutral building, which are these gray buildings that start on the board. Your only option is to take one of your auxiliary actions that are over here on the left side of your player board. We're gonna come back to this here in a little bit, um, but just so you know, the ideal positioning of your Grand Hero is either on a neutral building or on one of your buildings. But like we said, this trail is gonna become populated with more and more buildings as the game goes on, so you may not be able to always end your movement on your or a neutral building, but again, you can always uh, move less. You can always go just one instead of one, two, or even three, and just end your movement there. All right? Once you have, uh, if you land on one of your buildings or a neutral building, you can then take the action or actions that that building provides. So this is the majority of um, how you'll be doing phase B in the game is taking the actions of your building or um, the building here. Now, the game does come with an appendix that tells you every single, breaks down every single what of um, your buildings does and the neutral buildings. Everybody has the same buildings. You're gonna need that in front of you at all times, um, but it's a very good reference. I'm gonna go through these basic buildings because they also cover the basic actions. So. Let's talk about the first action you could take, and that is hire a worker. So here is the hire a worker symbol. You can see that it's the kind of uh, rainbowish background. It's the green, red, and purple, which represents the uh, kind of greenish, 
pinkish and reddish. Uh, it, it's, it's these colors here. There's also not, nothing on this person's head. This means you can hire a worker. First, you can hire a worker from this pool right here for uh, no additional uh, money needed. And then you can hire a second one, but it's gonna cost you two coins on top of what it costs to already hire that worker. So if I come over here, I can see that I have th all three different types of workers that I can hire and add to my board, but they each have different costs. So um, the only two rows that I can purchase from at this time are these top two. You can never purchase from the row that this coin is in. Until this fills down here and is filled up with a worker, this guy is off limits. But out of these two here, say I wanted a uh, machinista, uh, the train worker, I would probably want to target her because she's only gonna cost me six, and if she's the first one I hire, just six coins. Anybody that has one of these strength symbols costs you an additional coin. So this one costs me six plus one equals seven. But if she was the second person I were to hire, she would cost me six plus one for the symbol, plus here you can see that my second worker costs an additional two, so that would be nine for this person. These numbers change um, as you go throughout the game. So you're always just looking to whatever's here and then adding one if there's a strength symbol. Other times you might be able to um, hire someone at a discount and that would be like a plus one in green uh, if it was a one coin discount. Your, the next thing you could do on your turn is you could build a building. So that would be this symbol here. You're gonna see the um, pink symbol, which is equal to your construction worker here, your carpenter, all right? And it's gonna cost you, um, depending on this, the type of building, and you have to have the carpenters to build it, two coins per carpenter that you need to build it. So what does that all mean? How do I, um, that goes there. So at the beginning of the game, there's two buildings here that only cost one carpenter to build. All right, so both of these buildings would just cost me two pesos to build. Once I build them, I can place them in any open spot anywhere on the trail. I can put them directly in front of uh, an opponent of mine. I can put it behind me. I can put it way here at the beginning. I can put it way here at the end. It is my choice. What I cannot do is kick out somebody else's building, nor can I replace a starting gray neutral building. It has to go on an empty space or I can actually choose to upgrade one of my own buildings. All right, so I can take one of my own buildings off and put an even better one on. Now, to be able to start building these um, additional, these better buildings, you can see this one requires two construction workers or two carpenters. Well, to do that, I would have to have, say, this. Here I have two carpenters in my um, on my ranch. And so I can build this building. It would cost me four pesos to build. As I grow, I can you can see I can have up to one, two, three, four, five, six carpenters um, at any given time in my ranch. But you'll notice there's even some buildings here, two buildings that need seven carpenters and nine carpenters. Well, how do we get to those? Well, if you are upgrading your building, let's say for example, I have I have filled this out and I've already played this building here that requires five carpenters. If I want to upgrade this building, so replace it, get rid of this one and upgrade it with this seven, I actually only need two carpenters in my ranch and I only have to pay four pesos. That's two pesos per the two carpenters. Then I can get rid of this five and upgrade it to a seven. I could also spend four carpenters and uh, eight pesos to upgrade the five to the nine. Or I could come back later and upgrade this seven to a nine for just two carpenters. When you use your carpenters, you're not removing them from here. You're just, you have to have enough um, to prove that you have the uh, workforce to build such buildings. Uh, but that is how you get the buildings out onto the board. Again, there's a lot of strategy in where you place those buildings because you want to be able to land on them strategically. You want to maximize your movement, end your turn on one of your buildings, but also force your opponents to either 
take the long way around your buildings or pass over your buildings if it's going to pay you, if they're going to have to pay you some money to do so. All right. Next is move your engine forward. So there's a train track that runs all the way around the top and left edge of this board and then cuts in right about here. Now, why do we care about this train track? Well, there's several things. One is, is if we turn in here at all of these locations as we move our train along, we can turn in and we can upgrade a station. By doing so, you pay the amount there and you place one of your discs there. This is one of the ways you can upgrade your player board. You place the disc there and then you're gonna gain those victory points at the end of the game. Multiple discs of each color, uh, I mean, each player can upgrade uh, the stations, but you can only upgrade a station once. For the most part, you're always moving this way with your train, but say blue and red could each have a disc on each one of these. Also, there's these station master tiles, which you are, if you are the first person to get to and upgrade a station, you have the opportunity to uh, put a station master. That means basically put one of your men in charge or your women in charge. Um, in doing so, you have to actually remove somebody from your ranch. You have to pick up a worker tile and swap it out for this thing here. This is a bonus. This is a either one-time effect or a, say, constant effect. This would be a ribbon that you always have access to. Um, also, it gives you additional things that you can score victory points for at the end of the game. So as we're moving our train along, the biggest benefit, however, is that every time you pass one of these points right here, you have created a shortcut for yourself in getting to Buenos Aires. So if you chug your train all the way down and get past 23 here, every time you want to go to Buenos Aires, you could get off right from here. You could go one, two, three, and boom, you're in Buenos Aires completely cutting off that top part. But again, you have to take those actions to keep pushing your train down. Usually, you're gonna see that the action is move your train a number of spaces equal to the number of machinistas you have, which are right here. So the more machinistas, machinists you have um, in your on your ranch, the further your train can travel each time. Okay. The next action you can take that we're going to talk about is on this tile here, and that's the big cow head. This one is how you gain more cattle cards. Now, there's this big bar here at the bottom. This is where you should always have your cattle market present, and this is going to tell you how you purchase each of these different types of cattle. So all of the three strength cattle are kind of grouped together. The fours are all brown, the fives are all purple, and the ones are all orange, but the ones have really good strength. So if your strategy is to help a lot of ground harrows, you can pick this guy up for cheap. Now, how expensive the cattle are depends on how many cowboys you have on your ranch. So if I just have one, the one built into my player board here, my only options are to purchase one orange for four coins, or one of the three strength ones for five coins, or one brown one for 11 coins. I cannot even purchase a purple five without having at least two cowboys on my ranch. If I have two, I can purchase a purple one for 11, but if I have four, I can purchase a purple one for six. So the more cowboys you have on your ranch, the cheaper cattle become, uh, and the more you can acquire. So say I have four grand, or four cowboys here, I could decide to just send two of them to wrangle up a purple one for 11, and then take the other two to get a three cost person here, uh, say Blanco Negro here for two. Your choice, um, as long as you are not using more cowboys than you have on your ranch. All right, these last few um, are much, uh, actually, let's just cover something that we've already talked about here. You're oftentimes going to see this symbol here. You'll see this one looks very similar to the gain workers action. But this symbol, the person is wearing a hat. The silhouetted figure is wearing a hat. That is because this is help farmers, not hire workers. And this one, if you end your movement on this one, 
allows you to help any three Gron Harrows, any three farmers, anywhere on the board, as long as you have the strength to help them. So, again, you're looking at strength you have built in onto your board from your workers, and you're trading in possibly some cows in order to accumulate enough strength to help at least one, maybe two, of these farmers. When you do so, I skipped over this earlier, but coming back to it now. When you do so, you will gain, first of all, coins based on where they are on this chart. So if I helped this one, he would give me one coin. Also, you have the opportunity to add them to your ranch. That's how they're gonna cost you money. Six, six, eight, eight, ten. But in doing so, when you place them down here, like this first one's gonna give you an instant grain. This one's gonna give you an instant grain. This one's going to allow you to deliver something to left directly to Rotterdam. Uh, this one's going to give you grain, and that one's going to deliver directly to Liverpool. Grain is needed to put cows on these boats. you got to feed the cows when you put them on the boats. You can't let them starve to death, or it'd be spoiled meat by the time it made it to Europe. And anytime you take a gain a grain action, like this one here, it's usually dependent on how many farmers you have on your ranch. So the more farmers you have, the more lucrative, say, an action like that would be. When you are taking the Help a Grand Hero action, if you use cattle, think of it this way thematically, you're going to help a Grand Hero. You're putting your own sweat and blood into helping this farmer. If, however, cattle is also needed to, say, pull a plow, somebody's got to lead that cattle. So not only have you helped the Grand Harrow, um, you know, cut the wheat and chaff and everything else, but you also then turned around and helped lead your cattle, you are going to become exhausted. So depending on the number of cattle, uh, one to two, you're going to get one exhaustion card. Three to four, you're going to get two exhaustion cards. Um, these are negative points at the end of the game. Otherwise, they just clog up your deck. Uh, and are useless, especially if you carry an exhaustion card all the way into Buenos Aires. So that's how exhaustion cards work, and that's how the Help Gran Heros action works. Now, let's get back to these quicker actions that you're going to see populated throughout uh, these discs here. First one is this here, or this one here, with the little gear symbol. This one allows you to take a single auxiliary action. This one allows you to take up to a double auxiliary action. Now, what do I mean by that? I'm referring to this left side of your player board here. I could, right now, gain one coin or draw a card and discard a card as one of my two auxiliary actions. As I load boats or upgrade train stations, I could maybe unlock these two spots here and then if I gain one of those double auxiliary actions, I can gain two coins or draw and discard two cards. Or I could say start unlocking new actions completely. And when I gain the ability to take an auxiliary action here, I could trade in one grain to move my certificate down one and gain a coin. Or I could trade in one coin to gain one grain. And if I did this, I could do that twice. But if the action only has the one X symbol, you can only do one, even if you have both unlocked. So I got this one and I took this action, I still only get one coin. Then there's this symbol that shows the little card with a trumpet on it and a green arrow. That means you're gonna gain an objective card. So there's these objective cards here. They're displayed, these are ways to uh, earn end game victory points if you can satisfy them. So when you gain an objective card, you're gonna take it, you're gonna place it into your discard pile and eventually it's gonna end up in your hand. When it's in your hand, you can play it down and gain the immediate benefit of whatever's here in the upper left corner. Then at the end of the game, if you meet that criteria, you're gonna gain the VP. If you don't meet the criteria, you lose two VP. If you've never played it down, if you've kept it in your hand for some reason and just discarded it, it does nothing. Uh, what else is there? Here is uh, a symbol for remove an exhaustion card from your hand. So if you have it, if you've made it here to H and you have one of those exhaustion cards in your hand, that's a way to completely get it out of your deck. Not just discard it, but remove it completely. 
You also sometimes see this symbol is just a blue card with an X. That's remove any card. So maybe you want to start getting rid of some of these weaker starting cards, starting cattle cards. That's a way to get rid of them, call your deck down, make it more efficient. Anytime you see this symbol where the arrow is going down with the little cube, that is um, moving your certificate marker down. Certificates are things you can trade in once you get to Buenos Aires to increase the value of your cattle. So say I delivered this cattle. Again, this one wouldn't count. I have a thing of six, but I really wanted to deliver to this seven. I could trade in one certificate to make this a seven worth of cattle as opposed to a six worth of cattle. Last thing, uh, as far as the actions are concerned that I you probably saw and I just kind of kept skipping over are these times where you have the ability to discard a card. Sometimes it's a specific one, like here you have to discard a green cattle, a two strength cattle, so that would be this one. And you're gonna gain two coins. Well, this is a great way to call these starting cards out of your hand and either get all unique cards, say you have um, two white ones here, you'd really wanna stop here at the A because you can trade in one of these whites for two coins and that's gonna allow you to draw a new one, hopefully unique from these three. Or you may see something like this that says two cards that are the same. So they just have to be two matching cards. You trade those in, you get two coins. So that's a great way to help work through your deck, uh, maximizing it before you get to Buenos Aires. Now, Buenos Aires. If you get to Buenos Aires, whether you take a shortcut or you have made it all the way along the trail and made it to this fancy building, your action turn is going to be thus. First thing you're going to do is be able to deliver additional grain to European cities. Now. To be able to do this, you have to have shipped off some of your cattle and some of your grain to these, what they call quays. So as you add workers to this, this disc is gonna push down. And every time it crosses one of these thresholds here, those color boats are going to ship off. They're gonna be pulled up and the discs that are on them are gonna be delivered to specific quays, these white spots up here um, throughout the, um, the, the ports throughout the game. Once they're up there, your first thing you can do is spend grain. You have to have the grain to spend to deliver, put your disc down from here and put it over top of one of these spots here, securing it only you can go there. Now, like say for example, this one is gonna give me 12 coins immediately and three victory points at the end of the game. Well, that's really good but I would need six grain to be able to do that. All right, so my thing would have to be all the way up here. Boom, 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 boom. I've used up all my grain, but I can move this this out. Or if I maybe I only had two grain and I'm wanting to save one for my delivery of cattle, I could just move one here and say, go here, get me four coins. I'm not getting any end game victory points, but I got four coins. And that's the first thing you do. You already have to have a disc up here, and you always start the game with a disc up here in the top left one of Le Havre. If you happen to be in one of these two right ones, you actually get a two grain discount on your delivery. Just something to consider. Once you have decided of taking the optional grain delivery, then you need to decide how big, or determine how big or how good of a hand of cattle you have. We've talked about this several times now you would have to discard all duplicates. So you have only unique cattle, then you count up their, their total value here at the top, plus you might trade in any certificates, and that's your value, okay? You're first of all gonna gain coins equal to that value. So if my value again was seven, I get seven coins, and then you determine where you're gonna put your disc. Once again, you're pulling your disc off your player board here, so improving your player board and putting it here. Now, a lot of these ships also require you to send grain with your cows. So to put here, I have to have two grain. Well, say I already spent one grain moving down here and I only have one grain left. Well, when delivering, putting cattle on a ship and only when putting cattle on a ship, you can supplement two money for one grain. 
So in this case, I would spend one grain, two money, which I just received from my cattle, and I can still put my disc here. Then, since this one is yellow, once this pushes down and passes over this mark, this boat would take my thing and put it right here in Rotterdam. This boat would be removed and replaced by a different one. Not all of these take off. For example, this one here and the very top one stay put the entire time. They just are gonna give you end game victory points. And as these ones ship off, they'll be replaced by ones that aren't going to move and just give you end game victory points. Once you have put your cattle on the boat, you then are going to go through each one of these columns, four, five, and six, and pick one of these to either put into the worker market here, the job market, or if it's a granjero, um, a farmer, you're gonna put them into where their color is. So like blue always goes here, orange goes here, yellow up there, uh, and green would go right here. Whoever you take out, you're going to replace, and you always have to put out, you always have to choose a four, a five, and a six. You always have to pick one from each row, put them wherever they need to go, and putting someone, say you choose this guy to add, you're gonna push this down, and he goes right there, the next person goes there and there, and this is just for a two person game. If you were three people would, three person game would use this, four person game would use this, but that's how this keeps pushing down, which keeps firing off the boats. Once you have uh, done that, you are, um, once you've gone through all the steps, you're gonna put your, your rancher all the way back here at the start of the trail, and you're gonna draw back up a whole brand new hand of cards based on your hand limit, which to begin the game with is four. Now, a few things to touch on uh, regarding upgrading your player board here. So you'll notice that some of these squares have a white border and some of them have a black border, all right? To be able to pull the ones off of have where there's a black border, for example, here are your hand size. So to be able to upgrade your hand size, you have to take it from a black uh, and put it in a black. So I have to deliver to the nine or higher boat or I have to upgrade this station or better. So it's gonna take you a little while before you can increase your speed, increase your hand size, increase your, uh, double your strength, things like that. If, however, you are delivering to a, say the nine boat here, which has a black border, and you would much rather maybe upgrade this part of your player board, you can still put a white disc onto a black one. You just can't pick up a black disc and put it onto a white one. Black can only go onto black, white can go onto either one. That, although a lengthy explanation, is everything you should need to know about taking your actions during phase B of your turn. So once you have finished phase B, um, you, your last phase is to simply redraw up to your hand limit. So depending on whether or not you traded in cattle here um, to uh, take certain actions or gain coins, you're always going to start your turn or end your turn by drawing back up to your hand limit, whatever it may be. Now, there's these tokens here. We briefly saw this action earlier. These tokens um, allow you to, at any point in time, no matter where you are, you could be at the beginning of your turn, you could be at the middle of an action, um, allows you to draw two cards from your deck you also have to immediately discard two. So this may be a way, say you've entered Buenos Aires and you're saying, mm, I really wanna see if I can get a better hand. You would draw two cards and then discard two. Well, this is a bad example because I drew an exhaustion card and this black one. Let's just pretend, for example, that this was our draw two. Again, I've only got starter cards in my hand here, so this is not a great example, but if I knew there was like a five or a four hiding in here somewhere, I may, it may be worth me to spend these tokens to kind of work through my deck a little bit. You'll notice that there are various spots where you simply, by hiring another cowboy, by covering this up, you would gain one of those tokens. Uh, also, some of your buildings are gonna give you one every time you stop and take an action there. For example, this one. 
allows you to gain one of those tokens, also allows you to help three Gron Harrows with a, an additional strength of three. So there you go. But again, the last part of your phase is to simply draw back up to your hand limit. So play continues where everybody's just taking an action where they move their Gron Harrow, take their action, draw back up, next person's turn. This goes back and forth. You're gonna make multiple trips, five or six, all the way up to Buenos Aires. You're gonna hopefully deliver to five or six boats. You're gonna send people to these European ports and possibly deliver some extra grain. You're going to move your train. You're gonna build buildings. By the way, buildings offer you end game VP for building them as well. They don't just give you spots to take actions. You're going to improve your player board throughout the way, all in the name of hopefully at the end um, having the most points. The end game is triggered once this you continue to add. This keeps push, 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 push. And when this gets pushed off the board, whoever pushed it off the board gets this. It's two victory points. And that triggers the end of the game. At that point, you would count up victory points from buildings. You would count up victory points if you have a certain number of workers. You count up victory points from cattle that you have in your deck. You count up victory points from boats you've delivered to, from cities you've delivered to, from train stations you've upgraded. The whole gamut. Here's an example of a scoring pad, uh, my game versus the, the AI, and you can see each one of these is a different category that you can possibly score points on. Quite um, impressive. But that is how you play Great Western Trail, specifically Great Western Trail Argentina. I do have a how to play video um, for Great Western Trail, the kind of standard core game, specifically second edition. So feel free to search my channel for that if that's more what you're looking for. This is definitely more advanced than um, standard Great Western Trail. They've added a few things to it to entice those of us who are uh, veterans of Great Western Trail to come out and purchase this game. So there is a difference, there is a different feel to it, but at its core, it is still Great Western Trail. If you have any questions, please feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Um, and if you are looking for a video on how to play just solo, I'm gonna be making that video next. So keep an eye out for that. That'll be covering just how to control Pedro here and the AI um, in, how to play solo. So if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this in the future, please consider subscribing to the channel. Once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.